It's been a long day. We had to go through the traffic. We had to endure a lot to get here. And when we get here, we still have to deal with the strong emotions that we're dealing with. I think it's only important then for us to have a moment of consecration before we get into our praise and worship. So I'm going to ask you to stand. And for those of us who can, you can join us at the altar and we consecrate ourselves. I hand over to persons much better than myself in this particular department, the praise team, to lead us off in worship and consecration. Thank you. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty. Dearest Father, Dearest Father, closest friend. 
Lord, only this I seek. Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Lord, this will be my posture. Laying at your feet Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever One thing I desire Only this I seek Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell Lord, this will be my posture Laying at your feet Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever Say, dearest Father
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we stand for prayer? Hallelujah. We worship the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your holy name. We honor you tonight, God. There is none like you. We search all over. We couldn't find none like you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name, God, because you have been good to us. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, our souls cry out hallelujah thank god for saving us what a privilege it is this tonight to be in god's presence to be in his sanctuary to be numbered among the living what an awesome privilege and so tonight god we just want to tell you thanks for all that you have done for us oh god for holding our hands oh mighty god for bringing us safely god into this sanctuary as we come tonight to celebrate the life of our sister Tiffany. Oh God, our hearts are broken in so many ways, in so many parts, God. But we are thankful tonight, God, that you are the God who can mend broken hearts. Oh God, you are the ones who can dry our tears because indeed many of us have cried night and day. Oh God, many of us have had sleepless nights because we found it difficult to come to grips with what has taken place. Oh God, but we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are indeed with us. And you promise never to leave us. Even, God, in the times of fear and uncertainty, in the times of doubt, when we question you and we ask why, oh God, you are there with us. And so we thank you, God, that you have kept us. You have kept us in our right minds. Oh God, you have been our tower of strength through these difficult times. Oh God, you have proven yourself faithful. And so tonight we come to honor you, Lord, and we come to tell you thanks. Oh God, you, your words declare that all things work together for good. And I know how difficult it has become for us, God, to reckon with that passage of Scripture that all things, and even in this thing, God, all things work together for good. Oh, Lord God, it has been difficult, but we trust you, almighty God. And there are many lessons that we can learn 
from this situation oh my god how life is transient how life god is delicate and we can't play around oh god we have to be serious oh blessed redeemer so help us oh god to check ourselves and to ensure that our hearts are at the right place because we do not know when our numbers will be called almighty god so as we come tonight god to celebrate life of our sister to to talk about the good times and the you know the how she has affected our lives how she has impacted our lives oh god may we not leave here with that consciousness almighty god that the times oh god are uncertain and so lord help us god our hearts to be in that place god i present everything that should be done here tonight Oh God, every item, Lord God, every expression, every remembrance, oh God, that it will bring you praise and glory, Lord Jesus. Nothing will be done of self, God. Whatever we do, Lord God, is for your honor and for your glory. So God, we ask that you'll bind us together with love tonight, God, with cords that cannot be broken. Oh God, how when we leave, oh God, from face to face sometimes, we do not know when we will see the other person. We do not know if it's the last time. So, Almighty God, help us, oh God, to show love. And mighty God, to be strength for each other, Lord God. Once again, Lord, let us present everything into your hands, God. The musician, every person, God, here. We ask that you will just cover us, God. And at the end of this service, we will all say it was indeed good for us to be here. Because, God, indeed, your tangible manifest presence was with us. We thank you, Lord. And we say amen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. everyone can we stand for the reading of tonight's scripture it will be taken from 2 Timothy 4 reading from verse 5 to 8 and it reads thus but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand I have fought a good fight I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. It's an ending. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Here in the portion of God's holy word, as we honor it by saying, this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good night, saints of God. It is really hard for me to stand here because I understand the occasion. I have to treat with the emotions of loss, but I also have to treat with the emotions of celebration because our sister has overcome. And we have all been a part of that journey. It's difficult to be here. I'd rather sit there with you. But alas, I am the ram caught in the thicket, and I will just have to wear my cap carefully and skillfully. It's a joy to be here, though. Really and truly, it is a joy to be here. Could we put our hands together for our God has been faithful, and we're celebrating victory with the saints. God is faithful. God is good. God has been with us. And we have seen his hand of blessing. Today we celebrate our sister is victorious. And we will meet with her eventually. And we will revel in the fact that we too have overcome. And are now rejoicing with Jesus. I am tonight your mother, moderator, Andre Cohen. And I, my main purpose is to just guide the proceedings as best as I can. But I just want to do a slight welcome. A very small one. I'm sure each and every one of us will introduce ourselves at some point in the service. But I wanted to do it this way. I wanted to just call on a group. You're going to stand. You're going to remain standing. And then we'll, of course, put our hands together for you. So I'm asking for family members, relatives of Sister Tiffany Robinson. Could you please stand? 
if you are here, family members, relatives, I, I see you on. Could we put our hands together for Mr. Robinson? Thank you. I want you to remain. I want you to remain standing as well, sir. I just let me call now on persons who would have done ministry with Sister Tiffany, a, a ministry partner of Sister Tiffany. In one way, shape, or form, you have done ministry with our sister. Could you stand, please? Could you put your hands together for her? I'm sure most of us will stand here, right? I want to get an idea of those who consider Tiffany, Sister Tiffany, to be a church sister. I want you to remain standing, please. I need you to remain standing. She's your church sister. Could you stand, please? She's a member of your church. You and her, yes, yes, yes. Could you put your hands together for yourselves? All right. Is anybody here who considered, who knew Tiffany as a classmate? She was in the classroom with you. I see one brother over there. Could you put your hands together again? I want you to keep standing, please. And finally, if you consider Tiffany, I, I didn't go with this first. If you consider Tiffany to be a friend, could you stand, please? She's a friend. Put your hands together again. No. If you look around the room, there are some people who are sitting because they know I work with the instructions, and that's fine. But I want you to understand that this room is filled with people who are here because Tiffany touched you in one way or shape or form. I also want to use this occasion to remind you then, all of us will get an opportunity to share what, what, how Tiffany has impacted us. And I want us to take good advantage of that opportunity when it comes. You may be seated at this point in time. But let me just share with you very clearly that we have a packed program, a very tight program. In fact, I'm under strict instructions to make sure that we're closed at 9. And it looks like an act of God that will get us here, out of here at 9. But there's a reason why I say that. There are going to be tributes that are going to be, um, that are going to be time sensitive. And I'll let you know how much time you have. But when you're making your presentations, when you are upon your final minute, you will hear a sound cue coming from our keyboardists. Could you give me the one minute sound, please? Okay, when, you, when your time allotted has ended, could you, you're going to get another cue. Could I get that cue? For? Okay, so there, you know when your time, when you have your last minute, you know when your time is up. Brothers and sisters, yes, we have a lot of, we have a packed program. We have four slots for open tributes. If you want to make an open tribute, I want you to touch base with Sister Isola Malcolm over there. Sister Isola, could you stand please? Wave your hands. So persons who want to give an open tribute, please speak to Sister Isola. We have four slots. Additionally, brothers and sisters, additionally, um, I want us to be very attentive and I want us to pay keen attention to the tributes when they are being made. Okay? So, with that said, I want to go into our first... Oh, my apologies. I didn't do the welcome. Sorry. So, so let me just take this opportunity to again welcome the family members of Sister Tiffany Robinson. I believe some family members have just walked in. Could we put our hands together for them, please? And as well, we have some special persons in the room. In addition to the family members, we have some pastors with us, some ministers of the gospel who are here with us. We have, of course, I, I, you know, you should be introducing him to me, as Rev would say. We have Bishop Sims and Sister Sims with us. Could we put our hands together for them, please? Could you just give us a wave, please? Okay, excellent. We have with us as well um, uh, Reverend Wayne Wellington, who is here with us from... I don't remember the church. I will remember soon. Could you give us a wave, please? Okay. <laughs> Temple Hall. Uh, you see, and it, it's a, because it has two church-related names in it, and I should remember. And we also have with us, because I'm seeing them, and if you're here and I didn't mention you, you could just give us a wave. I'm seeing the pastor out of Spanish Town New Testament Church of God, who is also the associate pastor out of Spanish Town, New Testament Church of God, and a classmate of Tiffany Robinson back in the days of Bethel, Reverend O'Shane Walker. Could you give us a wave, Rev? 
Could you put your hands together for him? So, I also want to greet very well and, and, and very caref um, uh, quickly Bishop, Bishop Clement Clark. Could we put our hands together for our host pastor? And of course, Reverend Jennifer Brown, who I, I am biased towards. She's my mother. Could you put your hands together for her as well? And I want to take this occasion to welcome our church and pastors, council members. We want to welcome the members of the Eastwood Park New Testament Church of God. We want to welcome those of us who are from the national ministries. I see members from the prior ministry. I see members from the, the teens ministry, the children's ministry. Could you put your hands together for them, please? And of course, the members of the Eastwood Park Church who have been working with over the years with Sister Tiffany and who will make their tributes tonight Put your hands together for yourselves. Welcome to the church of God, to the house of God, to this celebration. At this point in time, I am going to go into the first tribute that we have. And it will come in the form of a spoken word. And it will be done by Sister Rissan Ford. Afterwards, I'm going to ask that the members, that the church and pastors council tribute comes. And we know that the church and pastors council will have two minutes to make their tributes so i'm making that clear right now so we're going to ask sister ford to come forward could you put your hands together for sister ford please I'm not ready, Tiffy, to recognize that I will no longer bear witness to your fruit. I shut it out, this dark place. I go to sleep, I see your face, I'm angry. Why was such a promise taken? My Lord, why have you forsaken her? My role model, my mentor, my friend, my motivator, my one call in, a, in the good and bad, my sister. I'm broken. And in my brokenness, I question the existence of the God I serve. Why take her zeal? It's hard to accept. It's hard to recognize that this could have just been God's plan because the peculiar presentation of this plan is preposterous to me. I've been unable to write. I've been unable to sing because my connection with the source has been strained one too many times. You always struggle to believe you are enough. I'm not the best at speaking, you would say, but like Moses, God helped you to lead a nation of young people, learning to read from the Bible. From the times we spent together working on CXC math, to me combing your hair, to the times you helped me with cooking, and the times I got you to come onto campus with me to pray with my peers, to the times in the prayer room, and the times praying over the phone at night. You've always been a rock for those around you while you suffered in silence. In this moment of grief, I stand here to honor the life of a friend so dear. With a heavy heart and tearful eyes, I must bid you farewell as my heart cries. Though my heart may ache with sorrow's sting, in your presence, Lord, sweet solace I bring. For you, Tiffy, have found eternal rest. Your soul embraced in God's loving breast. As I intertwine memories, laughter, and tears, 
I remember the moments shared throughout the years. Your spirit, Tiffany, will forever reside in the hearts of those you've touched far and wide. Your kindness, your unique laughter, your unwavering love now resides with the bridegroom shining from above. In the midst of darkness, your light still gleams as so far I've seen you in every dream. Your life may have ended, but your legacy remains. A testament of faith where eternal hope sustains. For in Christ, we find comfort. In his promise, we trust that life everlasting awaits the faithful and just. So we say goodbye with heavy hearts, yet still strong, knowing one day we will be joined with the bridegroom, with the bridegroom where we belong. In the arms of our Savior, reunited for eternity, forever in his presence where our souls are free. Farewell, Tiffany, until we meet again. In the realms of, of splendor where love never ends. May Christ's light illuminate your path as we bid you farewell with the love that will last. While I know that grief has its stages and I feel stuck in sorrow's dark gloom, I know that one thing holds real and true. I want to make it to heaven to see that Tiffany is with the bridegroom. Amen. Good evening, church. I, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Church and Pastors Council, we extend condolences to the bereaved family. It, it is not easy for the EPR Church at this time because we have lost around six of our members within quick succession. And I would say at this time, the church heart is overwhelmed. But I would ask the church family at this time, as we draw a portion of scripture from the book of Psalms, Psalm 62, verse 2, which says, When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. It is with deep regret that I stand here this evening to reflect on our dearly beloved sister, Tiffany Robinson. To some, she is called Tiffany. Others is just Tiffy. We know Tiffy from a tender age growing up here at Eastwood Park Road. It was not too long that we recognized that there was something special about her. She was often shared the word of God, and we watched her matured in the Lord. Truly, we would say, the calling of the Lord was upon her life. As we recount the young, vibrant, full of life, promising evangelist who shared the word of God that impacts the life of so many far and near. She often spoke of her own family, how her Christian life has impacted them and caused them to come to Christ. Her sermons are usually illustrative. She often used objects and things to bring out points in her sermon, which we find very creative, and it would have a long-lasting impression on what was preached. A couple of the council members would have remembrance. I saw the Malcolm said she remember how she was, a, she was a fearless young lady, loves the Lord with a passion, a true ambassador for the Lord. Councillor Roger Hallin said he remember her favorancy at the Fun in the Sun concert at Pembroke Hall. How she witnessed to the persons around. Councillor Patsy Bang said she admired her for her steadfastness and her sterling faith 
in spite of our circumstances. Councillor Von Rees Jones said that he remembered how he had a conversation with her just this May about how she shared her dream and her passion about starting a young ladies empowerment organization dedicated to mentor young and marginalized girls. We all knew of her sickness and the church prayed, likewise many individuals. We are Christians and we believe that God would have healed her and she would come and give her testimony. We were not prepared for this. I saw her the Sunday before she died at the entrance, and I went over and said, hi, Tiffy, and she waved her hand at me. Her death came to many of us as a surprise. We weren't looking forward to this. I recount the afternoon when my wife called me and told me that Tiffany had passed. It hit me like a ton of brick. It's always said that we should not question God about these things because he's the almighty God and he knows what's best. But we are still wondering why. Surely she will be missed by her family and the church family, especially the young people. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine upon her. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Bayrou. And thank you very much, Sister Rison Ford. Could you put your hands together for the tributes that we just got? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I must tell you that um, as, as believers, we are encouraged to persevere. I, I don't want us to persevere beyond the time that we have been allotted. Please. Um, we have a lot of tributes. I want to hear all of them. Right? So we, we are asking you, and I also want to make this known as well, that at the back of the room we have uh, a, a portrait of Sister Tiffany. So for those of us who will not be able to provide an open tribute, there's a, there's a portrait there that you will be able to write your tributes on, and the family of Tiffany will get it, and they'll get to hear your heart and how Tiffany has impacted you. So I'm asking you, please... Let us work with the time. However, wonderful tributes, and we appreciate them. Can I ask at this time for uh, the in-person tribute? I see here St. Hughes. Is the St. Hughes representative here? And I must encourage you, you have two minutes, two minutes to, to make your tribute, after which we'll take the tribute, the video tribute, from Roxanne Williams, and then we'll proceed with the program. So I'll come again after that tribute. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I wear two hats, St. Hughes High School and a member of this church. Tiffany worked at St. Hughes High for three years and nine months. I stand here as one of the guidance counselors. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, just a technical um, transition. We're agile people, of course. If the other members of the St. Hughes High School family have made it through traffickers, yet you may stand, but they are on their way if they're not yet here. On behalf of the board, principal, staff, and students of St. Hughes High School, we pay tribute to the memory of Tiffany Robinson. Tiffany joined the canteen staff on March 4, 2013 and stayed with us until December 16, 2016. I saw her culinary skills during crowning one year, and when I heard about the opening at the canteen, I told her about the job. She, she got the job, I remember. I drove her to the interview, and while getting near to the campus, she said to me, you know I've been on fasting for 21 days, 
And after I finished fasting, the very day you called and told me about the job, Tiffany was a prayer warrior. I recall she talked about studying in France because she wanted to advance her culinary skills. And every day at lunchtime, when other staff members of the canteen would take their break and be on their phone, Tiffany would be reading Christian literature. Here's what some members of staff have said about Tiffany. She was dependable. She got to work. By 6 a.m. She was there at 6 because the breakfast program depended on her. She would fry the dumplings very well, the fritters, to ensure when the students came for 7, everything was hot and ready. She was jovial, said the canteen director, pleasant, cheerful, positive stance on life. One member said she was always well-dressed and put together. Tiffany was easy to talk to, always pleasant, and easy to work with. She had a ready smile. We express sincere condolences at the loss of such a wonderful co-worker, and we extend sincere condolences especially to her family and immediate church family. Thank you. Thank you very much, St. Hughes. So we're about to cue the, the video tribute from Roxanne Williams. Tiffany and I met Tiffany um, and I some met years ago at CAM. CAM. Some years ago and when at I CAM. met Tiffany. Tiffany and when I met Tiffany, Tiffany was not this young lady. brave and fierce but young I hear lady. So many people but I hear so many people describe Tiffany her to very be. Shy. Tiffany was very and shy and very reserved. And very reserved. And Tiffany was serving at CAM. Tiffany was serving at CAM at the time in the kitchen. Tiffany never cooked for you yet. Girl could cook. Girl could cook. And what was evident about Tiffany? What was evident about Tiffany back then was that Tiffany was more interested in what was happening in the kitchen. Inside. Inside. Kitchen, what was happening inside. I remember saying to her, and I think I remember saying to her, and I think this was the first conversation. Come I said to her, and if you don't have come anything, outside, man, if you don't have anything during the kitchen, you can, come, you can come out here and be a part of what's happening. And from that conversation, and from that conversation, and grew this beautiful and treasured friendship. I mean, to know Tiffany, I mean, to know as Tiffany, a friend and as a sister, as a friend and as a sister, is to know support, is to know that support, has no limit. that has no limit, and to be able and to be able to share to ministry, share in ministry by virtue of the team. Um, by virtue of the team, the friendship it just grew made the stronger, grow stronger, and the bond grew, and even, the bond stronger grew between even stronger the between two of us. Tiffany the two was, of a us. Tiffany was a beautiful of. person inside. And of. You know, I'm, and I'm so you know, honored I'm, to have I'm so not honored only to met have her, not only but met to have her, had her, but to have had um, her be such um, an important, be such part, an of important part of my and life. And I honestly, and I, I, I honestly, I, I miss my but sister. But I know that she's but safe. But I know and that I she's know safe. And that I you know, know it is well. That you know with it her is soul. well with her soul. Could you put your hands together, please? She's not here to receive your applause, but that's a wonderful tribute. Can I just, um, could you just permit me to just welcome a few persons who would have joined us after we did the welcome. Very important to have them here tonight. I want to pay special uh, welcome to Sister Clark, uh, Sister Marsha Clark. Yes, she was here and I didn't welcome her earlier. Could you put our hands together for Sister Clark? <laughs> My apologies, Sister Clark. And we also have... Uh, I, I have Sister Doctor, so I'll work with it. We have Sister Doctor Vinet Notice with us here tonight, our National um, Ladies Ministry President, and of course, the better half of our Bishop of the New Testament Church of God. Thank you for being with us tonight, Doctor Notice. And of course, can I just take some time to welcome as well um, Reverend Lim Limano Wishart, who is with us. 
and his spouse is also with us as well. He's at the back. Could you give us a wave, please, sir? Thank you. And of course, let me take the space to also welcome with us tonight, also at the back, and we're going to ask her to give us a wave. Well, both of them to give us a wave. Sister Hazel Campbell and, of course, Sister Kavinia Campbell. Could we put our hands together for them, please? Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm looking out for those specially invited persons who are here with us tonight and to make sure that we greet you in an EPR way. Now, at this point in time, I'm just going to ask uh, Sister Isola to let me know if we have an open tribute for this time. No one has indicated that they want to make an open tribute. And that is fine. Now, I'm going to ask um, for the in-person tribute that, that ought to come from the National Teens Ministry. And I'm also going to ask the National Prior Ministry to make their tribute as well. Now, both tributes will be for two minutes. And so we will have your cues for you. So you'll know that you're with it, whether or not you're within time. So the National Teens Ministry, the National Prayer Ministry, after which we will ask the media team to show us the clips of, of, of the Tiffany, the dancer and fashionista. And then we will have the EPR dancers. So the Teens Ministry, the Children's Ministry, the Tiffany, the dancer and the fashionista, and of course the dance routine from the EPR dancers. In that order, thank you. Put your hands together for them, please. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Allow me just to offer on behalf of the National Teens Ministry condolences to the family and friends of our dear sister, Tiffany Robinson. In the National Teens Ministry, she was known as Auntie Tiffy. And I can stand here and say without fear of contradiction or upset that Auntie Tiffy was one of the most impactful teens workers of the last decade. In many ways, she embodied everything that it meant to be a teens ministry worker. Her compassion for the teenagers of the New Testament Church of God was evident. But not only did she have a big heart for them, but she was a sterling role model. She was an anointed woman of God. Her prayer, her preaching, and her counseling left an indelible mark on the lives of teenagers all over the country. The outpouring of grief and brokenness that came in as a result of the news of her passing is evidence of her impact. But the thing is, she's not just a spiritually mature person, but she is a wonderful human being. And so we don't know her just as a ministry partner, but we know her as a friend, as a confidant, as a sister, and for many, a spiritual mother. Tiffany is someone who is full of energy. She laughs and she enjoys herself. And then she also holds and embodies the highest standard of Christian conduct. She's a role model to many teenage young ladies and a model for many teenage young men of what their wives, they would want her to be like. May her soul rest in peace. Good evening, everyone. Nothing is more beautiful than a woman who is brave, strong, and emboldened by the Christ who is in her. Tiffy became a member of the prayer team in 2017 just because she volunteered on the team for the Youth Congress that year. She was always needed front and center if we wanted a prayer worker. An altar worker, she was always there if we needed a demon chaser. She was always there if we needed an intercessory teacher. 
She was always there if we needed a preacher or a support worker. She was there at every fair Friday, Congress, convention, retreat, poem, everything that we needed her to be, even when, when she wasn't available. We could always depend on her, yes. Anytime she said yes, we could depend on her, yes. You can always depend on Tiffy to fashionably show up in her own variation of the team's uniform. Whenever we went out to minister, she was well dressed in her makeup, but best believe she was never afraid to cry, cry out the makeup. She was never afraid to sweat out the hairdo. She was never afraid to dissemble the uniform just to pray for the persons that she wanted to pray for. We can remember celebrating with Tiffany when she received some major accomplishment and achieved you know, some goals in life that she pursued diligently. When she passed her CXC after preparing so hard, when she got her first job as a chef, when she opened her restaurant, Tiffany's Delight, and we were lovers of that loaded fries. When she started Bible school, when her father got saved, and when she was elected as PRO for Bethel Bible College. We were anticipating so much more, pastoral internship, official appointment to church, and you know, getting married to the ram in the ticket. And we are grateful. Her life was not cut short, but she lived a life, a well-lived life. Rest in peace, Tiffany.
I'm just going to ask um, the persons, these persons to be prepared. Um, Bishop Wellington, in the next iteration, I will call on you. And um, if Reverend Knight is here, um, the teen choir is here, and uh, of, is ready. And of course, if Bishop Page is here, we will take you in the next iteration. So at this time, the youth department, the two video tributes, and I'll come again. And the youth department, of course, has two minutes. Uh, and, and again, we, we're doing well, church. We're doing well. So thank you. All right. Youth department, thank you. Evening, church. All right, so if you see me fidgeting and stuff, I'm just, you know. So, Tiffany Robinson, a.k.a. Tiffy, a.k.a. Auntie Tiffy. She was the epitome of passion, unwavering faith, and humility in service, just to name a few. As a servant in youth ministry, the evidence is clear to me the impact that passion has on our youth. When they see persons, they look up to live their lives fearlessly with immense desire, motivation, and commitment. It's infectious, and they yearn to emulate them. Auntie Tiffy, as many of her teens call her, lived these qualities till her last breath. Thanks to Tiffany, the pale, boring, lifeless Christian image in the minds of many of our youth was replaced with a vibrant, lively, and dynamic one. And that one that didn't reduce a person's individuality, but that individuality was enhanced in the light of the gospel of Christ. The life of the Christian is wrought with various challenges and temptations. The news of many stalwarts failing by the wayside abound, and, and the message of the world continues to be drilled in the mind of our youth. Drift, drift, drift. But with unwavering excellence, Tiffany lived a life that was uncompromising. The same Tiffany you saw at church was the same Tiffany outside these four walls. Her life is a testament to the fact that young people can make it. Her constant message has always been, if I can in Christ, you can as well. Powerful, dynamic, Holy Ghost filled are some of the words used to describe Tiffany's ministry. And I'm wrapping up. She's ministered at EPR. She's ministered across the denomination. She's ministered across denominational lines. The power of God was always evident when she ministered. Yet, she was never too busy, never too proud, never unwilling to condescend. No person, no task, no request was too lowly for Tiffany to commit to. She spoke to kings, but she also sat with those of no status. Tiffany's singular goal was simple. Was this the Lord's will? May Tiffany's life teach us how to live with passion, commitment, and humility. Live in peace, my sister. We miss you. I remember when Tiffany started coming to Easter Park as a teenager. From the get-go, you could see the passion in her for the things of God. I am usually in the control room, but when I'm not working in a control room, I'm sitting right outside, upstairs to the back, and that's where the teenagers would normally sit during service, unless it's teens ministry, Sunday or youth Sunday. And I watched Tiffany with such adoration because even though teenagers sometimes get restless during the service, when it came down to the worship and the preaching, she was all attentive. I remember this particular Sunday, the preaching was going on and somebody elbowed me and said, look at Tiffany. And I looked over to where she was and Tiffany's face, you could see that she meant business. She was in tune. 
she was fastened onto what the preacher was saying. I think it was Reverend Sims who was preaching at the time. And she was in tune to what he was saying. And you could see the anointing on her. And then all of a sudden she sprang to her feet and the anointing of God overtook her. And I sat there just looking at Tiffany and looking at what God was doing to that young lady. And I was just amazed. Tiffany, when she started coming to Eastwood Park, yeah, like most teenagers, she got her bashing. We don't like to talk about the sad side of ministry, but yes, yeah, she got her bashing. But unlike some people, Tiffany took her bashing in strides. And instead of going down, she grew. She used it as a, as a stepping stone to become the woman that God had called. I According to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9 and the verse 24, he tells us, Do you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. We celebrate the life of a young lady who ran to get the prize. Tiffany lived a life that left us a legacy. She impacted so many lives during her time with us. We will truly miss her. Indeed, we will truly miss her. Her warm smile, her passionate conversation, and not to mention her style and fashion. Let us remember Tiffany by living in the legacy she has left with us and continue to impact lives and change the world. We pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen the church and her family during this time. May her soul rest in peace. Could we put our hands together for those video tributes, please? And I must tell you, forgive me, I'm sure we have an audience online, and I didn't welcome you earlier. We are happy to have you, our EPR online congregation. I know some of you would have just seen your videos played, and I'm sure you're pouring in tributes in the chat. We're encouraging you to pour in your tributes. We will read them when we get the chance, and we are looking forward to hearing from you as to how Sister uh, Tiffany impacted your life as well. So thank you for being here with us tonight. And we're looking forward to hearing your tributes, to reading your tributes, and to also be able to share with you in this time of celebration. At this point in time, I must concede, members, that there will be a change to the program. We will not have the choir at this time just yet. But we are going to have an open tribute. Um, but that tribute will follow the tribute, of course, from Bishop Wellington. I'm asking, though, if the media team can, can just indicate to me if we're ready for the, for the clips for the clips related to Auntie Tiffany. Is the Auntie Tiffany clip ready, media team? All right, there, there, there. I'll, I'll confirm later on. So we're taking Bishop Wellington. Then we'll have the open tribute from Sister Jemina. Um, the open tribute is two minutes. Bishop Wellington has two minutes. I know you'll be efficient, sir. And of course, we have, and we will take the clip of Auntie Tiffany afterwards. Thank you very much in that order. Put your hands together for Bishop. Greetings, everyone. It was 2011 when I met this beautiful, vivacious young woman called Tiffany. I served as the youth director for the Church of God. And she was a part of the first group, that pioneering group of youngsters from this very church who went to Cleveland, Tennessee to represent us at the International Teen Talent Competition. When we got there, it was evident that Sister Tiffany 
normally doesn't stay too buried in the crowd. I sat in the, um, in the canteen and I heard a ruckus. And I heard the singing, Ole, 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 feeling hot, hot, hot. And when I looked around, there was a train going around and it had all my Eastwood Park young people, all the young people from Gregory Park, and then Canada and Coco from New York joined in. If someone had asked me, where is the director for Jamaica? I would say to him, let me help you find him. But brothers and sisters, Sister Tiffany stands out and she's passionate about that which she does. I was really, really heartened and encouraged when I saw that she enrolled in Bethel Bible College and I had the privilege of, of teaching her before I resigned from the institution. But my brethren, there are a lot of questions. But this young lady, I know, fulfilled her task in this life. She has preached for me at Temple Hall a few times, and I've had to go and reorganize my church after she finished, because she preached. But let me just say this in closing. Her life was short, but well lived. And for those who have the questions, years ago we lost a young minister, and we did not know why God did it, what was his thinking. And all the theologians were stumped. But one farmer came up and he gave a little tribute. He said, all of you asking why, remember this, God is the farmer. And if God decides that he's going to pick the banana young and boil him tea, fiend business. If he decides he's going to allow it to be firm and cook it with him curry goat, fiend business. And if he decides to allow it to be ripe and eat it with the bread, a fame business. Tiffany, we love you, but you are God banana. See you later. Okay, gotta be a big girl for my friend Tiffy. Good evening, everyone. Many of us, when we get the chance to have big dreams, when, sorry, many of us, when we get saved, we have big dreams of where we want to go and what we want to do in God. But I had a friend who was sold out on just doing whatever he asked, going wherever he sent her, in a tribute to, her, to a friend who lived through the eyes of Christ is simply all one could ask for. I will miss the laughter, the encouragement, and even the tears we shared along this journey. You taught me so much with the little life that you were given, and I always said thanks. It's just that this time, you're not around to hear it. I will miss your cooking, because as Abelia's, your sense of style, on point. And down on the list, but not by means least, your love for God and his young people. Camp with Auntie Tippy, your girls knew they were leaving with something special and that they were in Auntie Tiffy's dorm. Life for many of us won't be the same as we will, meet my, we will reach milestones that we all discussed and shared. It's just that you won't be there to drop the Tiffy love, to drop the Tiffy dance, to drop the Tiffy praise with us. We loved every minute we had with you. We only wish we had more. Love you, Tiffy. Thank you very much. Sister Jemina, or should I say, Auntie Jemina. I, yes, um, I think somebody is correcting me. I'll just not pay attention. At this time, colleagues, um, as, again, we are going to have to make some changes to the program, as we understand. And so I'm, I just want to cue the, the video now for Auntie Tiffany. Afterwards, I'm asking... We have to change things around. We're asking for the Pinnocks to join us on stage um, to make their tribute. 
and the Pinox's tribute will be for two minutes. And as well, uh, is, the Bethelite, is the Bethelite here who will make the tribute? Ah, perfect. So after the Pinox, we'll, we'll have the Bethelites for two minutes as well. And, and remember, brothers and sisters, if you are interested in doing a two-minute open tribute, please go and visit Sister Isola Malcolm. Thank you very much. All right, so in that order, media team, thank you. Let me say a pleasant good evening to everyone. Let me greet the host pastor of this congregation and uh, the immediate past pastor and wife. Let me greet, of course, the um, past national youth director and all the other leaders here and colleagues. Um, let me greet Sister Notice, who is sitting here um, and representing Bishop as well. This evening is uh, a pretty interesting one, sad one. Um, I've, I, I don't know if I've met someone whose heart has not been broken by death. I think that death is the most universally cruel thing on the face of the planet because of its devastating impact on the human heart. But I also believe that death is, uh, you know, this wonderful door that takes us into our hope, that takes us into those things that we sing about. By and by, when the morning comes, you know? I believe that death takes us into those uh, places that we clap our hands and sing when i get there when i get there i will sing and shout when i get there so though we are sad here i'm telling you there's a hallelujah praise ye the lord now that i am here I want to say that um, I've had the opportunity myself and Sister Pino to 
have had Tiffany serving with us in the National Youth and Discipleship Department during our six-year stint. And what a wonderful time that really and truly was. Tiffany was, as you would have heard, the Energizer Bunny who was so passionate about ministry and life and her faith. Um, she was a part of the inaugural National Prayer Ministry. And of course, that year when we had the prayer tree at the National Convention or in Congress, I think it was, Tiffany was, of course, the volunteer who said, Pastor, me after they had the prayer tree, can anybody come? I get a leaf off of the prayer tree. She was just passionate about prayer. I know that our hearts are broken in this season and in this time, but I want to comfort our hearts this evening that in John 16 and verse 13, Jesus says, in this life, we're going to have uh, trouble. But he says, uh, comfort uh, your heart. I want to encourage you to simply be comforted because Tiffany is in the presence of her Lord. God bless you. Good evening. We would like to greet Bishop Dr. Clement Clark, Reverend Sims, all ministers in the house. We would like to greet Tiffany's family, her friends, and all our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are the members of the fourth year batch of the Bethel Bible College of the Caribbean, Jamaica. We stand here this evening with mixed feelings of the passing of a passionate, dedicated, humble, optimistic, and enthusiastic servant of God. Psalm 116, 15 to 19 reminds us that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. To us as Bethelites, Tiffany was a remarkable individual who treated the work of the Lord with respect and the utmost reverence. In Tiffany's presence, we felt the warmth of unconditional love and the gentle embrace of acceptance. Tiffany was not just a preacher by words. She was a living testament to the teachings and actions of love, kindness, and forgiveness. Though her actions she demonstrated the true meaning of humanity. In addition to this, another outstanding and admirable quality that Tiffany embodies was her level of elegance, inner poise, eloquent fashion sense, and confidence which impacted us all. Tiffany was a part of our final year batch that will graduate in, Nick, in the next graduation in 2024. She served as our batch president par extraordinaire. Tiffany would care for us by checking, checking with us and checking on us, sorry, to see if we were absent from classes or called to ascertain the reason why. She would also send us words of encouragement and would specifically call prayer meetings and prayed for us and encouraged us to pray as a batch. She would also pray with us individually as members of the batch and the school community at large. Another key observation was her sermons, was that her sermons were not just only structured, but was definitely spirited. And her zeal for the word of God would be felt even if it was simple homiletics and hermeneutics assignments. When she preaches, her infamous sayings are, Ah, God, or I am going somewhere, or follow me, church, I am going somewhere. 
And when the, the anointing is upon her, she would hold her head as an expression of the power of God. Rest in heavenly peace. A warrior, a preacher, an evangelist, an intercessor, a friend, a fashionista, a dancer, a singer, a sister, a teacher, a classmate, a daughter. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, in the end, it's not the years in your life that counts. It's the life in your years. Rest in peace, Tiffany. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Bethelites. And uh, I, I must say that we have had some beautiful tributes tonight. And I think we should all put our hands together for those who have borne their heart before us tonight. You know, we, we, we sometimes, and I, I, I just had a conversation today, and the person said to me, you know, there is someone who basically spoke to them about how they ought to deport themselves. And they say, you should live your life as though you're writing your own eulogy. And there is this idea that they shared that we live as though we are writing our eulogy. All of our life is poured out in such a way that we will have a speech written about us at the end of our days. I, I don't know if I subscribe to that idea. But I must say that when we look at Tiffany's life, we see enough for us to rejoice for. I hear how much Tiffany is committed I hear how much Tiffany is humble. I hear how much about how purposeful and committed and driven Sister Tiffany is. And these are all values that we can embrace when writing a eulogy. But beyond that, brethren, these are values we can embrace when we're thinking about an example of Christian living and just an overall example of good living. And so we thank God for Tiffany's impact. And I know it's not easy for you to share. And so I want you to put your hands together again for yourselves. You have done well. And these are beautiful tributes. Very wonderful tributes. So I'm hurrying along uh, because the time is, as it, is what it is. I, wanted to, I want to ask um, our, our bishop, uh, the immediate past bishop, um, Bishop Sims, to come and share with us. And, we, and you will have two minutes, sir, um, after which we will take. I just want to know if um, Jason Pinnock is available. Is Jason Pinnock is ready? So we'll take the video tribute from Brother Jason Pinnock. And I'm going to ask, is, uh, I see a Leng here. I don't want to mispronounce the first name. Is Leng here? All right, let me just say Musa Leng. Musa. Okay. So we will... So... So it will be Bishop Sims. Okay, we have Bishop Sims. Then we have the video tribute from Jason Pinnock. And then we'll have the in-person tribute from Pastor Musa Leng. So looking forward to those. Could you put your hands together for the bishop, please? Thank you. Greetings, my brothers and sisters, Bishop Clark and Sister Clark, First Lady of the New Testament Church of God, Dr. Notice, other ministers, family members, let me greet you well. It's two minutes and I'm going to try and work with it. I may not succeed, but I'm going to try. I want to extend sincere condolences to the family members 
and especially to Tiffany's father, her mom in her absence, her siblings and other relatives and friends. I wish I could explain, I wish I had an explanation to give to the family members, to the young people, and to all those who have questions. The only explanation I have is that God knows best. God knows best. In Isaiah 55, 8, through 8 and 9, from the Good News Bible, it reads, my thoughts, says the Lord, are not like yours, and my ways are different from yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and thoughts above yours. Tiffany, the fashionist, and we can't leave that out. Tiffany knows how to dress. And when she dresses, you have to notice her. She was a sincere Christian woman. She had a very deep relationship with her God. She knows what she wants. And she worked towards it. She was focused. I remember giving her the opportunity to preach her first sermon right here on this pulpit. And I've watched her grow and develop and became a dynamic preacher. I know she had a passion for the word. She loved people, and especially the teens and young people. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, Tiffany has lived a well-rounded and a full life. When I heard she was ill, I called her up. I prayed with her. And I believe God would have granted her a miracle. But God said no. We don't always understand when God says no. But God knows best. I believe her soul is resting in peace. Thank you very much, Bishop Sims. So... Brothers and sisters, there will be a slight change to the program. At this point in time, we will take the teen choir, and then we'll go back to the order that we had it um, before. So I'm going to ask the teen choir to come, me, find your positions, and minister before the Lord. Thank you. So while the teen choir is finding their positions, I'll just remind you of the order. So after the teen choir, we will have the we will have the video tribute from Jason Pinnock, and then we will have Reverend Musa Leng, and then we will go into another batch of tributes afterwards.
of God, I just want to make a quick intervention. You know, one of the things we, we have to appreciate sometimes as Christians is that we don't get to choose the conditions within which we do ministry. We simply have to minister through pains, through grief, sometimes through lack. We simply have to minister because there is a sense of purpose that calls on us to minister despite our circumstances. If you understood what these young people had to overcome just to come up here tonight and the things they had to go through just tonight to come up here and minister, it was through tremendous pain and grief. But such is their commitment to ministry. It appears as though there was something Sister Tiffany laid on their lives that they would understand that they simply have to minister despite the circumstances that they are going through. They were in tears. And there was a point where we contemplating not having them minister tonight. But they still persevered because of that sense of purpose. Could we just put our hands together again for these young people? And let them know that we appreciate their commitment to ministry. And I simply had to break the program just to acknowledge that it was through great pains. Just as many of us have that these young people 
followed the example of Sister Tiffany and ministered before the Lord. I'm now going to hand over to the controls to hear from. Greetings, EPR Church family. I want to use this opportunity to express sincere condolences on behalf of Andrea and myself to, of course, the family of our dear sister Tiffany Robinson, to the EPR Church family and to the wider New Testament Church of God family. Um, we are indeed saddened at the sudden passing of our dear precious sister. I remember working with Tiffany in the Youth and Discipleship Department. And I can recall her, her zeal, her fervor, her passion for the Lord and, you know, just for ministry. And, uh, you know, just want to use this opportunity to, to honor the life and the legacy of our dear precious sister. Um, she, she fought well and she ministered, I believe, with all her heart. Um, you know, in the service of the Lord. And many people I know were impacted by her life and ministry. And of course, the word of God encourages us not to sorrow as those without hope. For in fact, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, you know, I believe she, she, she ran a good race and um, she laid it all on the field, as it were, for the Lord. And, you know, hence what the Bible said is laid up for her a crown in glory and not for her alone but for all of us who who look for the lord's appearing so you know my prayers for the comfort and the strength of the lord to be with tiffany's family and the wider church family um during this time as as we as we mourn together and as we you know support each other during this during this difficult time god bless you and take care Good night to the bishops and their family, all the men and women of God here tonight. The Lord richly bless you in Jesus' name. Um, yesterday morning, I, I woke up, and to be honest with you, I woke up with Tiffany on my mind. And it was yesterday morning that I found peace because I woke up with her on my mind. I began to have a conversation with God, and he just reminded me that Tiffany actually belongs to him. And sometimes what gets us is that our expectation of someone is not being fulfilled. Um, and I begin to reflect on one thing I'm happy for is that I was here to see her conversion. I was here to experience her baptism. And then the Lord would have moved me elsewhere. And I remember I was scrolling through Facebook one evening and her cousin, Kadian, had post her first sermon that she had preached there. And I cried, just tears of joy. Um, and I just reflect and look at her growth. When she was going off to college, she would have messaged me about it. When she got sick, she told me about it. And we, we stayed in touch, especially her mom and I, great friends. Um, Tiffany is somebody that will encourage you. <laughs> Even in the midst where she needs encouragement, she finds a way to encourage you. Um, our last conversation, we spoke on her birthday. And to be honest with you, I was looking forward for her to get better. Because um, Bishop Clark, not to your knowledge, you don't know about this, but in May, I wanted to invite her up to preach for me. And she told me I'm going to speak to my bishop about it. And, and whatever answer comes, but she fell Ill, Ill and was unable to do so. Brothers and sisters, sometimes as a church, Pentecostal church, we normally just focus on faith from the aspect of God doing something for us. But I believe the greatest measure of faith demonstrated is still trusting God even when he's not giving you the answer that he wants. And we have seen that in Tiffany. And I oftentimes tell the church that I pastor that the greatest sermon you'll ever preach is the life that you live. And Tiffany has preached an excellent sermon and to be honest with you, even though she's not physically here with us, that sermon has still been preached by us being here tonight. And my encouragement to you is let us shine and show an unshaken faith as Tiffany did. God bless you richly. In Jesus' name.
and let's jump to our feet.
is all I got. But always see how great, how great is all I got. Hallelujah. Let the saints of God lift up their voices and shout a, a hallelujah. 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 We are celebrating tonight. And so let me just go quickly again into the remainder of the program. I have an open tribute here from a brother Alex Henry for two minutes. I'm going to ask brother Alex to step forward. And also I'm going to call on the ladies ministry, um, the EPR women's ministry, I should say. And I'm going to ask the media team, can I have the video tribute from Sister Denisha Gordon? Is Denisha Gordon ready, media team? Okay, they're not, they're not conferring with me. So I will take the in-person tribute from Sister Tamika Blair. So Alex Henry, the EPR Women's Ministry, and then Sister Tamika Blair, in that order. So Brother Alex here. Okay, great. Two minutes for each tribute, please. A uh, pleasant good night, everyone. Whew. All right, so I won't be long. Um, I'll try my best not to be. So I've been sitting here and I listen to everyone talk about uh, how Tiffany was a fashionista and she loved the Lord. But one thing we also fail to remind that Tiffany was also good at reprimanding. Right. We, and she reprimands with grace. And it's not the reprimand, it's the reprimand for you to feel bad, but it's also for you to come back. And my last encounter with Tiffany was at you retreat while she did that sermon. And if you were at you retreat, you probably would remember how that went. So I was there and I wasn't feeling well and I went up and I went inside to sleep and I heard that she said, if anybody needs perfect healing, they should come. And I run and I got up and I went outside. When I got to Tiffany for the prayer for healing, Tiffany words was, you know long more, will you? Those were her words. And I didn't get a prayer for healing from Tiffany. I got a reprimand of my life. When she said to me, it's full time you get your act together. She stepped down and she whispered in my ears and she said some stuff. And I was madly upset because of the forum it happened. She doesn't know that, right? And I was waiting to tell her that I was upset with her. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to. But I'm glad she do, did. I'm glad she told me that... Uh, I need to shake up the ground and do what, ne what needs to be done. So while we remember Tiffany in all of this, remember that uh, she reprimands with grace and with love. And if I remember everything, that last conversation that we have, that's what I'll always remember. So to Tiffany, we love you and we miss you. Good evening, everyone. Tribute to the late Tiffany Robinson on behalf of the Women's Ministry Department at the Eastwood Park Road Church. Revelation 4 verse 13 says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Who was Tiffany? I'll use the letters of her name just to describe her. T, tenacious. I, industrious. F, faithful. F, fashionable. A, ambitious. N, neat. Y, youthful. All these adjectives describe the person who Tiffany was. Tiffany had one of the brightest smiles whenever she greeted me. Her eyes were always 
shining with radiance as she gave this warm embrace. And of course, she would end with a cheerful, how are you? Who was Tiffany? She was the minister who was always ready to minister God's word. And she never missed an opportunity to preach on Women's Ministry Sunday. Her messages were always power-packed, anointed, spirit-filled, and the message touched the lives of many, and they will be greatly missed. Tiffany was that young lady who was always regally dressed. You couldn't help but admire her whenever you see her. And boy, oh boy, those heels that she used to wear, they wowed me, and I know you're saying the same thing. Tiffany was that granddaughter who never leave grandma alone. Sister White, she didn't have to worry when Tiffany was here. Even if Tiffany had to get a ride and send her home and then come after, she always looked out for grandma, Sister White, and I know she is missing her granddaughter. Tiffany was that daughter, sister, cousin, niece, you name it, friend, who was always passionate about the salvation of her relatives and friends, of course. The day her dad got saved, she rejoiced with all her heart, and she expressed her joy in no uncertain ways. I recall on several occasions her testimonies of how she's praying for Biggie and Little so that they will get saved, and of course, other family members. Tiffany was one of the pioneers behind the program Bible Addict. And I can recall week after week, my son and many other teenagers would come, even during COVID online, they would come just to study the word and to learn how to apply it to their heart. She will be greatly missed for Bible Addict. And my prayer is that the legacy of Bible Addict will live on as a testimony of how a young person touch the lives of other young persons and, of course, encourage them to be godly and to retain their purity in these trying times. Tiffany's faith was unwavering. During her illness, her faith was heightened to a level that not only gave her a reason to fight on, but those who listened to her and prayed with her, their faith, too, was heightened. I want to say to us, that even with this heightened faith and much sacrifice with fasting and prayer, Christians too lose the battle over sickness, illnesses, diseases, the untimely death and such the likes. But I want to encourage us today that even though Tiffany lost the battle to cancer, we, and we are saddened, we do not mourn, mourn rather like those who don't have any hope at all as we are reminded in 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. And so I want to say to you all, hold fast to your faith, brothers and sisters. Hold fast to your faith, young people who came up here earlier, broken but they did it. For in doing so, we will see Tiffany again. Tiffany's life was a blessing. Her memory will remain in our hearts. We are deeply saddened by her passing, but grateful for the time we had together. Our beloved sister, friend, colleague, mentor, role model, and so much more have left us far too soon, but her loving presence will endure forever in our hearts and soul. May her soul rest in peace. Greetings to all the pastors and the family. Condolences. I have a group of friends that I call my forever friends, and Tiffany is definitely was one definitely a forever friend of mine. I met Tiffany in 2012 when I came to this church, and over the years we got closer and closer. We had such a unique friendship. She was a big sister, yet a mentor, 
and a dear friend of mine. We shared many laughter and, and you know Tiffany laugh when when she really really laughing and that squeal come out and that high pitch will share much of those and then she run off and hit you yeah but while we had those casual, casual conversations Tiffany would be that friend that doesn't only laugh with you but she would say Tam I see this area of correction. Let's work on it. You need to grow in this area. And I appreciate her for that so much. One of my favorite memories with Tiff was almost a week long sleepover at my house before I left for Japan with Shana Christabel. Um, we spend the time praying and fasting. You think, girls, my parents were away, and you think we just have fun, but no, we were praying and fasting, and Tiffany would lead some sessions, and we have a good bond and sisterhood, and we celebrated her birthday. I enjoyed lots of car moments, laughters, and those dreams, sharing those dreams that we want to see happen someday. Tiffany was again a mentor, a prayer warrior, a fashionista, a lover of the word, a preacher, a top dancer, and someone you could depend on. Tiffany, I know you're dancing for the Lord up there. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. And we're coming down nicely. I'm going to ask at this time for the media team to cue the video tribute for, for, for Donisha Gordon. And um, afterwards, we'll have the Life Builders Men's Ministry of EPR and we will also take another clip afterwards for Orin Wallace, Dwayne Gordon and I believe Ayanna Gordon, that clip. So we'll have those three um, up next. I'm so broken, yet I'm rejoicing with you because even though many would have said your life here on earth is short, it's not short in God's eyes because you came, you allowed God to use you, and you conquered if you conquered and it's it's a time where we need to celebrate you celebrate all that you have done for it's not based on how you have started but it's based on how you've finished it and if you finished well you finished well in God's eyes you finished well towards here because you've left a lasting impact on many persons, not just within our church community at Eastwood Park, but also across the globe. You've impacted both young and old. And I just want to say to everyone who is listening, celebrating, mourning, rejoicing with Tiff, today that one thing I, I would know that she would want all of us to remember is her legacy. And her legacy is that it's not where you started, but it's how you finished it. And she has finished the race well done.
Can I, can I get my timer, please? Of course, the rules apply to me as well. So good night, everyone. I'm Andre Cohen, and I'm presenting on behalf of the Life Builders Men's Ministry, the tribute for the life of Sister Tiffany Robinson. The Life Builders, family ministry, the Life Builders Men's Ministry continue to, to mourn with the Church of God at EPR, but we also want to take this occasion to commend Tiffany and her life, for she has demonstrated an extreme level of commitment, a sense of purpose, and a positive attitude in how she approached ministry. The Life Builders Ministry has always admired how Tiffany deported herself even as a, a convert. She has always been committed to her life as a, as a Christian, and that has been something that we have embraced and we, we love to see in young people coming through the church of God. The ministry has also embraced her sense of purpose again. In that in everything that Tiffany does, even how she operates outside of ministry, there is always a sense of purpose in what she is doing. It feels as though nothing is wasted and nothing is idle with Sister Tiffany. We, we commend her sense of purpose. And as well, we believe that Tiffany is a true leader in how she operates amongst the young people, in how she galvanizes and brings the young people um, in their own faith and walk with God. This is something that we also find to be invaluable. And we can say so much about Tiffany's relationship with the young people. But the Life Builders also believe, our ministry also believe that Tiffany had a great relationship with the adults of the church and the seniors of the church. And that is something we also endeared in Tiffany's life. We believe that Tiffany's life was a life of example. And we, and we commend her for what she has done. And we thank God for the fact that we had the opportunity to share with her in ministry. And we look forward to meeting with her again when we get over yonder. So the Life Builders Family Ministry, we commend Sister Tiffany for a life well lived before God. Thank you. So I believe at this time we have another video clip to play. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and cue that video. Thank you. Um, Tiffany, even though Tiffany joined us a bit late, it almost felt as if we knew her from, from, from her way back. You know, she was blending so easily with us. Um, you know, we did so much, so much. There was so much in I don't think I can say it in you know, 30 minutes. So let's be with the people um, from, you know, from ministry, you know, Volcom, you know, Volcom was, was that ministry that we really connected all of us together, um, you know, we did pantomimes and hand mimes and, you know, singing and drama, it was just everything under one group, group. and it was so wonderful, it was, it was one of the best time of my life, hands down. And uh, it was such a privilege to share this with Tiffany. Tiffany was there with us every step of the way. Um, you know, we all grew up now, and Tiffany has grown into a really phenomenal woman of God. Uh, she has touched a lot of lives, a lot of lives. I was really shocked to see her reach you know, so far, so widespread. Um, she was just a different type of girl, I tell you. Pure, pure, pure. Uh, it's so hard to find a pure female. You know, I just young person in general in this day and age. Um, you know, the soul of the Christ completely, you know, avoiding every obstacle coming their way and just focus on God. That was Tiffany, you know, proclaiming God every step of the way, you know, in a house, you know, at church, at school, you know, even in a little clip. You know, Amika, Christabel, Shanagi, uh, Diana, and you know, whoever, whoever else was in that group. You know, Tiffany was that blue to that group, making sure that every one of these girls, you know, was, was, was on the right path with God. I was at Chiki to see, you know, how they're doing with God and all that. I can talk of my wife, you know, Shanagi, and tell me so much about Tiffany. 
you know, was the one to say, hey girls, how you doing, you know. I think that was really cool, you know, she was that type of girl. This is my third time trying to make this video. Still trying to find words to express how grateful I am to have served and to serve with Tiffany. You know, we, my, my wife and I, we often joke that you know God is making a next Sister Drummond in the works. And if you have been with Sister Drummond like we have, you know we do respect her a lot. And we saw great traits, character, a great anointing on the life of Sister Tiffany. And we were so blessed to, to have been with her and to just to say that we were a part of her life. She's indeed someone that would have left a mark and it's it's difficult to express how we feel knowing that she's not here but the hope is and the joy is that she's present with the lord we want to send our condolences to the to her family the church family and her friends and we want you all to know that Myself, my wife, we do love and care for all who are feeling the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, the grief, everything that hurts, we are feeling, and we do love you all. Family, be strong. We send our love and be encouraged. God bless. Remembering Tiffany, Tiffany was my friend. She was somebody I looked up to. She was somebody who entered church and when she entered, like her life was on display because she was so out there and she was radical and she was unashamed and she got involved and she was in ministry. She was very involved in like the teens and on a national level and just watching her go out of her way to do so many things for God and to never say no and to always be praying and always worshiping and always being a listening ear and she was just like just amazing um I watched God work in her life in ways that I did not know God still worked <laughs> um so to speak and she was a very big influence on me to kind of show me what it was like when you are so sold out for God that you allow him to really have his way in your life and, and to see the fruits that can come out of that.
I will also miss the time that we were in church in Mojave and also nationally and team events because she's always available. She can go always one of those persons who we can call upon. She's there for team granny, she's there for Bible Queens, she's there for the Congress, and she's always volunteering at the camp because that was also one of the ministries that she holds dear to her heart. And so I would definitely miss working with her because as a matter of fact, just seeing her, seeing her at church, hearing her preach, and all of that. And I would definitely, definitely remember all of that and also just how much she loves the Lord and she has the passion for ministry and she would share her life story on any platform. It doesn't matter where she is, she would talk about how the Lord saved her, how the Lord taught her to read and how he has kept her and she would go so bad, definitely. I was at church, I was in the
for protection. Rebakosha, a woman trouble. Lebeke Satan, Dababakosha, Riba, Dabakundu Kusia, Ribaka, yeah, you may talk to. Naman de Bebeke Siondo Bokosa, Riba, Dabakusia, and Ribeke Siatan, Dabandu Kusha, Ribende Mekusha, Ribako Satan, Dababakusha. Ribeke nda rababando kosatai Ribinda bando kosata Lemanda baba kundu kusata Ribeke shia You think God's house is a plating? Ribanda bakosa Ribeke shia nda rababa kosa Oh God Almighty tell mother you're not coming back Ye beke shi andara baba kosa ye Uribondo boko sata Go back in the scriptures The Lord at the beginning When he went to Calvary's cross in John He took lashes for every disease name amongst man Even those that we don't know He went to hell He took the keys Grave death has no control over a child of God. Ooh, diseases have no control over a child of God. It doesn't matter what you're facing now. And let me tap. Because I don't think you're getting it. And I'm not embarrassed. Catch me when I'm falling And you told me 
because of what you've done not because of what I've done but because of who you are Saints of God, thank you very much for being with us still. And we have been treated to some just amazing ministries. At this time, we're going to have a tribute from Simon and Friends. And after Simon and Friends, we will have a quick exhortation from Reverend Jennifer Brown, my mother. And so I'm just asking you to be a little patient with us. I think they're ready for us. And their tribute will be for two minutes. And then we get into the exhortation or the sermonette from Reverend Brown.
ti Greetings, my brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord. It is always a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercies endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. For the mercies of Almighty God endures forever. I pause to greet our pastor, Reverend Clark, and Sister Clark, and to recognize the presence of Reverend Sims and Sister Sims, all the ministers in the house, and all of you wonderful brothers and sisters. I greet you well. In the name of the Lord and my family and I would like to say publicly condolences to the family of our dear sister Tiffany. Let me see if I can share with you in two minutes what I have to say. You can count on me. I won't be long. I bring your attention to... 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1, and it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tent or tabernacle is dissolved or destroyed, we have a building from God a house not made with hands, eternally existing in the heavens. Lord, bless thy words unto our hearts and glorify thy name and the church say, Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, indeed, all of us gather here this evening with mixed feelings. And there are some questions that we can't answer. There are more questions than answer. But my brothers and sisters, I bring you a word of comfort from the scripture that I just read. Paul lightened our human body as a tent. And we know that a tent is something that is frail and easily destroyed. Something that is weak. And sometimes you have to replace the stent. You have to pull it down and use or build up a new one. But Paul says in the text, for we know. He didn't say we are thinking about it. Oh God Almighty, this body, church of God become sick at times can i tell you the day that tiffany went home to be with the lord i was at the hospital watching and seeing everything and, and we prayed and we trusted that she would have lived in spite of what we see but my brothers and sisters oh god the tent was ready to be changed somebody talk to me oh god can i say this evening that 
death for the Christian is not a loss. For we know, for we know, we are not guessing whether we die old or young. We know that this tent, this frail body, if and when it is dead or dissolved, we know as the children of God that we have a building, we have a new body eternally. Somebody talk to me, existing in the heavens, and like Tiffany, all of us, oh God, will get a new body. We are going to have a body that cannot die somebody talk to me free from sickness free from cancer eternally in the heavens so until then our hearts will go on singing hey, until then with joy Church of God, in sickness or in death, we shall carry on. One day, hear me, church of God. We are going to say goodbye to sick bodies. For this tent, we're going to have a new body. Hey! Could we just stand for a moment in the presence of Almighty God? The word of God has gone forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like this is an occasion for the church to appeal to God in this moment. He's speaking to the church of Almighty God. Hallelujah. I think this is a moment for us to pause what we are doing. And recognize that the comforter is come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God Almighty. You say comfort my people. I pray oh God Almighty that you minister to our circumstances tonight. As many of us are at different stages of grief, oh God, processing loss. But God, we celebrate tonight. For oh God Almighty, we know that we are victorious in your presence. And just oh God Almighty, as you have caused our sister to overcome, cause all of us, oh God Almighty, to be filled with that peace and joy, knowing that there will come a time when we, like Tiffany, We'll have that testimony of victory. Comfort. Comfort my people. I pray, oh God Almighty, that you speak a word in this time and season. That minister to each and every individual situation. I pray you start answer some questions, God. I pray you start bring order to some confusion. I pray, oh God Almighty, that you begin to minister health and help and strength, oh God, to those of us who have been wearified by this season of loss and grief. I pray, oh God, that you restore us as we celebrate, as we rejoice, as we reflect. And the life that was knowing that we will get a chance to reunite when the fullness of time has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister to us, oh God. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that you just begin to lift, oh God Almighty, everything that is not of you. I pray, God, in this atmosphere, every weight will be lifted. Hallelujah. 
Oh God Almighty, I pray that you minister to our burdens tonight. I pray, God, that you lift the veil of off of our eyes, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. I pray, oh God, even as we bring the burdens, oh God, even as we bring the weight, God Almighty, I pray you will lift it off us. God. Oh, God Almighty, for those of us who are just going through the motions because of this situation, because we have lost our sister, I pray, oh God Almighty, that we will come out of that loop of despair, God, and step into the peace that you minister. God Almighty, you're doing something new tonight. I pray, oh God Almighty, that all of us will be recipients of what you're doing and that you will not shift circumstances and we are unawares. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. This may be the hardest, yes. But who is better to speak about our sister than the persons who would have walked with her over the last 15 years? She, we would have slept together. We would have ate out of the same plate. We would have done everything together. And so tonight, as we share, when I met her a couple years ago, she was everything that I was not. Ah, uh, she had a smile. She had everything. And as I looked at her, ah, uh, but we had one thing in common that we loved to laugh. And for years, I know a lot of person talk about the preacher, but she was ministry within herself. Um, she taught us that our words must match our action. Uh, she taught us, I, I, I believe that when Paul wrote about being content, he looked down and he saw her and he said she was the example of what contentment means. She never complained. Even in her last moment, she never complained. She was more worried about us and how we were doing than us worrying about her. Um, she was an example uh, of what, when, he, when God spoke about the light, she was the light. Um, she reflected, when she walked in a room, there was a reflection on her. And you, you were drawn to her, her smile, her dance, everything about her was a reflection of God. And so, good night, everyone. So, I just want to share just a memory, one of my best memories with Tiffany. Um, many persons may not know me, and I'm always good with that. When Reverend Sims was about to leave Eastwood Park, he would have given me teens ministry. No, I was I never saw myself leading that ministry. But there was Tiffany right beside me. Chrissy, come on. Are you for do this? 
you are called to this. Even if it's one teen come to teens ministry meeting, make sure so the meeting happen. And she was one of the constant for me through that ministry period. Um, to be honest, I never expected this. I never expected this to be it. We would laugh about going to Africa. We are planned for Africa. I told her to bring back my dashiki when she coming back from ministry from Africa. And we were waiting on the testimony. This was not it. I mean, I'm looking back and I'm saying, the Lord would have allowed me to be there with her. I'm telling you, even if I'm coming off shift 10 o'clock in the night and I have to go to Tiffany because I have to do her dressing, may I reach there. In no matter the time, I have to do it because Tiffany don't want nobody else to touch her but me. And looking back, it's like, I'm, I'm thinking God really orchestrated it. We never know that this would be the end. But even when she became ill and weak and everything, it's like the Lord would have allowed us to go to her favorite places. We carried to the beach. I know she wanted to go to teens camp to work, but she couldn't. And I took a day. Diana was on vacation, and we said, we are going to go to a teens camp as Tiffany. That's, that's her love. That's her joy. That's her pride. That's her heart, teens ministry. And even when we went down there, she said, Chris, look, what they have to do. Even in our weak state, and I don't know, many people will think that we did not do the best. But that was her. She went there full and she had to come back up empty because there's a teenager that needed deliverance, that needed a word. And can I tell you, even though we were there for a couple hours, it's like the, all the teens were just so happy to see her we're under the tent chapel and we are there with them. <sighs> I mean, the latter part is like Tiffany said, the Lord would have told her, don't say no to no preaching engagement. And it's contrary to what many would think should happen. But we were there, took, 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 took behind her, Diana as a driver, me beside her, praying for her, and even youth retreat. I didn't think that would be the end of it. Even preparing for that, Tiff said, it's like she had so many encounters in that time. She would, she, she would say the Lord would give her a specific person. She know who she go. She don't reach the youth retreat yet, you know. But she know who and who the Lord, because the Lord gave her the names of who she needs to speak to. And those encounters, I mean, I said, Tiff, like, where you get this strength from? And she has said, no, man, there's work to be done. And when we went to youth retreat, she poured out. We didn't leave until the next day. And even then, she said, Chris, still have more. We're doing another prayer room, helping persons. And I'm like... Wow. And so, one of the biggest lessons that I would have learned from her is that even on empty, Tiffany trusted God. She trusted God even on empty. Like, even in pain, we would have seen... The start to the end, even in pain, 
Tiffany trusted God. Many people don't understand and many people were not privy to it. But Tiffany, even in pain, she trusted God. And even after finishing ministry, many people are not privy to it. But in the middle of the night, me and Diana in another room and we are massaged and we are help her with the pain and I give her medication. Because at the end of the day, God work afido. And uh, even though this is not what we expected, I know she died empty. Empty in the sense that whatever she came to earth to do, she did it. Yeah. Those are my few words in Jesus' name. Good evening, everyone. I know that we are way over time, and I really want to apologize, you know, for the extended time. I'm going to ask someone to please go to the light switch at this time. Person designate for the light switch. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. I'm going to ask you, once you have your phone... And just follow the instruction. I'm going to ask, as you turn off all lights, I'm going to ask the praise team to come at this time. I'm going to ask the persons to my far right, go ahead and turn off, it's okay, all lights. I'm going to ask the persons on my far right to take out your phone. And you're going to go for the torch. Tiffany has lived a life. She has left a mark. I'm going to ask those on my far right to stand. Everyone on my far right to stand. And as you hold your light, can someone, this one can't go off? As you hold up your light, Tiffany has shined in many ways. I'm going to ask the next row to stand. The next row immediate to turn on your lights. And that's how Tiffany kept touching lives. I'm going to ask this row to stand as you turn on your lights. So this is how you would have concerned, she would have constantly touched lives. And I'm going to ask those on my far left to turn on your lights. And I'm going to ask the praise team at this time to go ahead as we remember Tiffany as she takes her candle and she lights up the world. Hallelujah. There is a in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a Confused and torn. Confused and torn. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what Tiffany has done. She has shone wherever she went. And so she has lit up the world. And we will remember her for the work that she has done. God bless you. your candle go light your world we can't think of a better example right now than Tiffany Robinson permit me I know we're closing now we're at the very end but just let me greet Reverend Sims and Reverend Wellington and Reverend Pinnock they're still here. I don't know if Reverend Wishard is still here. Okay. Um, if there's any other minister, I greet you in Jesus' name. And I want to once again just send the condolences to the bereaved family and just to greet everybody in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My brothers and sisters, I just, I really don't have anything to add to what has taken place. Tiffany was just an, a fitting exemplar of what a sold out woman of God can be. What that looks like. I think she is a fitting example of what a totally sold out woman of God looks like. And so, I know, you know, that, as we have said, the theologians will continue to be baffled by the fact that Tiffany was so young, so promising, had impacted so much, and you wonder how much more she would have impacted. And indeed, we all know that longevity has its place. People, we want to live long. But I keep saying to my people wherever I go, that there is no virtue in length of years if there is not quality to life. And Tiffany was quality living. And so because she died so young, I don't, I believe that it's mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. She did what God wanted her to do. She played her part and she has left the stage. We must now do what we must do. And yes, we're going to cry because we miss her, because we love her. And when you love somebody, that's how it hurts when they go. But we have to carry on on the stage until our time comes. I, I just want to say before I ask you to stand that we know that Tiffany has made it and we ask you to please ensure that you live the quality lifestyle that she lived that you can see her again. You don't want to not see her again. But if you are going to do that, you need to live the quality life that she lived. So as we close, let me say thanks to Brother Andre for he did his best. Put your hands together for him. He tried every, everything within his powers to keep it to 9 o'clock. And maybe if it was not him, it would, we would go to 11. <laughs> Thanks, Brother Andre. You did a masterful job, and we thank God for you. Um, and my brothers and sisters, as I sat there and listened, I said, after these 
excellent and articulate tributes these moving and proper songs and singing that we heard and you know all of what everybody did i i feel good about the celebration and so i think we can close now with what reverend wellington said is god's banana and god can do anything you want with them banana we then cut it young when it fit or when it ripe is god's banana and him can do anything he want with it let us go understanding that this is god's doing and what god has done is well done god bless you richly we continue to could you stand with me we're going to be praying for the family and we're going to pray for all of us we're still hurting you know but it's just that we know that she, she's with the lord and we're going to see her again so oh the praise team gone all right <laughs> no i was just going to say let's sing hold out your candle and then we pray to the almighty god where well, we spend the time already so we can spend that one more minute to sing hold out your candle Because in spite of everything, you have been a good God. God, we are hurting, but we know you are a good God. God, we cry, but we know you are a good God. God, we even question you, but we know that you are a good God. Hallelujah. And so we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for lending Tiffany oh god to us that she could show us that she could demonstrate to the world what good christian living and service is all about thank you god thank you thank you for the impact that she had thank you for the many persons that she mentored and guided thank you for the many souls that she preached into the kingdom thank you thank you god she has played her part she has finished the work that you gave her to do hallelujah so we thank you for what you have done god i lift up the family i know how they must be hurting right now Oh God, every memory, hallelujah, every reflection on what she used to do. Oh God, the memories. 
But I ask you, God, that you'd hold them in your hand. I pray that you'd fold them to your bosom. God, let them hear the throbbing of your heartbeat. Let them know that in this time, even though their hearts are broken in two, but you're with them. And you will not leave them nor forsake them. Because you have promised that. You will not leave them at this time. God, we still have a bereaved church. Bereaved youth department. Bereaved Bible college. God, a bereaved church. Oh God. But we ask you, the God who knows how to comfort. You know how to comfort. And so we ask you, God, that you'll touch us and guide us and lead us. And God, grant that, yes, I, I am confident, God, that you're going to take us through this. And many of us are going to be stronger because of it. So God, put your hand upon us. Glorify your name in this season in this time and God as we remember Tiffany's God may we worship Tiffany's God as how she worshiped with everything that we have with all that we have in us may we worship him God so that at the end we will be assured that our lives will be hid with God in Christ. We will be assured that our souls are with the Lord. Thank you once again Master continue to let our cries come unto you in Jesus name we pray amen and amen and amen God bless you my brothers and sisters and friends thank you so much what a marvelous celebration we have had Thank you so much for coming. You have caused it to be what it is. Of course, we go on to the Thanksgiving service on Saturday, 10 o'clock sharp. Those who can make it, we look forward to seeing you. God bless you richly. Let us do the benediction at this time. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Please.